Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today we're going to talk about praising God even in the midst of difficult circumstances. And the title is, Yet I Will Still Praise. Every Christian will face critical moments when they must make a choice. Will they trust God? Will they become disillusioned? Will they close their hearts and walk away? Perhaps they arrived at this point due to the loss of a child. Perhaps they survived a catastrophic disaster, but they lost everything in the process. There was no one to blame. There was no crime committed. No human error can be found to explain the cause of the tragedy. They search their hearts and they wonder if they brought this upon themselves by wrong choices. The Lord reminds them that he is not a vengeful God. Somehow, somewhat reassured, they tentatively ask the next question, why? All too often God answers, will you trust me even if you never find the answer to that question? If our faith is grounded in God's character, we will declare, even though I don't know why this happened, I know that my God is good and I will praise him. By declaring his goodness and reminding ourselves of his great love for us, our hearts will remain open for his comfort and to receive his reassurance but we must remain childlike. Corey Ten Boom tells of a train trip she took with her and Papa. Perhaps out of boredom, she asked a rather delicate question, shall we say. Her father wisely discerned that she was not mature yet to comprehend any direct answer he could give her on that particular subject. She writes, he turned to look at me, as he always did when answering a question, but to my surprise, he said nothing. At last, he stood up, lifting his travel case from the rack over our heads and set it on the floor. Will you carry it off the train, Corey? He said. It's too heavy, I said. Yes, he said, and it would be a pretty poor father who would ask his little girl to carry such a load. It's the same way, Corey, with knowledge. Some knowledge is too heavy for children. When you are older and stronger, you'll be able to bear it. But for now, you must trust me to carry it. And I was satisfied, more than satisfied. I was wonderfully at peace. There were answers to this and all my hard questions, but for now I was content to leave them all in my father's keeping. And that's from Corey's book, The Hiding Place. God understands our frustrations when we don't receive an answer to all the whys in our heart. But our Heavenly Father knows that sometimes, even if he were to answer, we would not be able to comprehend his explanation and so we must trust his goodness and say, God is good. His intentions towards me are to bring blessing and his mercies endure forever. In that place of active faith, we must put that burden into his hands so he can carry it. First Peter 5 verse 6 and 7, humble yourselves become childlike under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. We talked before about questioning God and accusing God and the difference in between asking him a question and part of that 
difference of attitude is the submission of our hearts when there is no answer forthcoming that explains why we're going through what we're going through. But do know this, God never sends an illness upon a person to teach them some character trait. God is good. There is a lot of suffering in the world. A lot of it has to stem all the way back to Adam. There's free will where bad people do bad things to good people. But if God didn't give us that free will, then we would be robots in his world. I'm personally grateful that God has given me a free will so I can freely choose to trust him that he is a good God. His intentions are always to bless me and that I can freely choose to give him my heavy load until I'm ready to hear the answers that I can understand.